Hey guys and welcome to a new Dungeon Defenders 2 video. I'm your host Mr. Peter and let's learn about Ancient Power. To summarize it, Ancient Power is a prestige system. Everything that you have progressed in will reset but you'll gain some bonuses. This whole process can be very long depending how prepared you are and we'll talk more on that later on. It's actually quite hard to fully grasp what Ancient Power is so I think it's a lot easier if we visually experience the whole process by watching this video example. I would like to thank Zenus for providing this video. Cheers lad. No idea if he does Twitch anymore, but he does have one and he mostly plays Apex. So if you're interested in that, check him out. All right, let's begin. First off, if you guys didn't know, in the Onslaught tab, you can see your target floor and you can also see a sneak peek of your next emblem. Really cool stuff. Zenus's target floor is floor 74, which he has done. So well done to him. Alright, let's go back a tiny bit. Right here, he's showing us a Gilded Shard, a upgraded Hyper Shard, and a upgraded Chaos 7 Shard. Your shards will be affected when you Ancient Power, and we get to visually see it very soon. He's showing us the tier of the gear. Your gear will also be affected when you Ancient Power. Again, we'll be able to visually see it very soon. In order to Ancient Power, you are required to be at least level 250 and to beat your target floor. Once you've done that, you want to meet up with this fella over here. On this page, this section here tells you your current bonuses that you have and this section here tells you what you'll gain when you Ancient Power. Zenus will gain a 5% gold and XP bonus, that's always default. He will also gain 309 talent caps and 0 minimum ascension. To get talent caps and minimum ascension, you'll have to climb Onslaught and the higher you go, the more talent caps and minimum ascension you can get. Talent caps are this thing here, everyone starts with 140 and the max limit is 999. And minimum ascension is what your new level will be when you ancient power. For example, Zenus's minimum ascension is 6258. So no matter how many times he ancient power or reset, he will always be level 6258. He's actually level 6339, so he will be downgraded to level 6258. But if he was lower than his minimum ascension level, he will automatically skip levels and be level 6258. That's something to think about. Before you Ancient Power, this pop-up message will appear telling you what you're going to lose and what you're going to gain. So when you do Ancient Power, you get a random prestigious weapon. That's nice. His Chaos 7 gears have been downgraded to Campaign. However, his mods are still the same level. They've been downgraded to Campaign mods, but the level will always stay the same. They will never downgrade your mods to level 1. His Gilded Shard hasn't been affected, but his Hyper Shard progression has been reset to 0, and his Chaos 7 Shard has also been reset to 0. And also his ascension level is now his minimum ascension level. He was level 6339, but now he's 6258. He's gained a token to whatever ancient power buff he would like. Because he has a high minimum ascension level, he can put points anywhere. He can max out his monk's damage and his monk's health with lots of remaining points left. All of these points are going to help a lot during his reset. Because all of his gears are now in campaign, he will have to recomplete all of the chaos expeditions again. However, there is a way around this, I'll talk about that later on. His starting floor is floor 48, so he has to complete this floor with campaign gear, or whatever gear he decides to upgrade. His target floor is now increased to floor 76, 
it was floor 74, but now it's floor 76. Hopefully this has helped you understand what happens when you ancient power, but just to make sure, let's do a quick recap. To ancient power, you have to be at least level 250 and to beat your target floor. Now what gets reset? All equipment levels will reset back to campaign, but your mod levels will stay the same. All shard progressions will reset, including hyper shards. I know I said hyper shards won't be affected in a different video, that's my mistake, whoopsie. If you have any gilded shards, they won't be affected at all, so try to get as many gilded shards as you can. All chaos expeditions will reset back to chaos 1, that's because all of your gear have now been converted to campaign. And lastly, your onslaught floor progression will reset back to your starting floor, which increases depending what ancient power you are on. Now, what do you gain? You get a really cool emblem to show off. If you want to see all the emblems in this game, I've made a video about it. It's in the description down below. Check it out. A 5% gold and XP bonus, increased talent caps, and your ascension level will transition into your minimum ascension. Now you know the process of it and what the after effects are, it is up to you on how you want to approach it. Ancient power is optional, you don't have to do it. However, I do recommend resetting at least once, but only when you have 999 talent caps. Having the increased stat bonus for anything is game changing. It's gonna help you a lot. Now, if you're interested in ancient power, you may wonder what floor shall I reach to get the best minimum ascension? Many people use this formula right here to calculate the ideal floor to stop at. Don't worry about talent caps, that will come naturally. This formula is based on your max onslaught floor you've ever reached, minus your original target onslaught floor, which is always 30, times by 4.16, plus your max ascension level you've ever reached, divided by 50, then times the whole thing by 3. To give you an example of what it looks like in figures, let's say your highest onslaught floor is 273 and your ascension level is 500, so the equation will look like this. That's 273 minus 30, which is 243, times 4.16, which is 1010.88. 500 divided by 50 equals 10. 1010.88 plus 10 equals 1020.88. Then times it by 3, which is 3062.64, but we'll round it up to 3063. So 3063 will be your new minimum ascension level when you ancient power. This is a preview of what it will look like if you ancient power. You will have 1021 points on each tree. This will allow you to max any tower's damage plus 20 points onto the attack rate, which is very important. To answer your question, it's best to stop at floor 273. However, it's highly recommended to go higher. I myself stopped at floor 363 and I can definitely say those extra points definitely help. Trust me on it, you won't regret it. Xena stopped at floor 500 and he has tons of points available, so he won't have any issues with his resets. Now, let's talk about the best hero for resets. The best hero to use during your resets is the Nuke Monk and here's a video example. All of the Monk's gear is in campaign, but Xenus does have the help of ascension points. Max out your damage first, then your health, that's very important to remember. He is on floor 72, so all the enemies are going to be somewhat tanky. Even on campaign gear, the monk can shred, but the most important part of this is his minimum ascension allowing him to have tons of points onto his damage. Even against flying enemies, again, the monk can shred and destroy. So before you decide to reset, get a build for the monk. Because you have a lot of damage from the monk, you don't need to upgrade his gear. However, you can upgrade your defense relics. This is all the materials that you need and the total cost of upgrading the relic to Chaos 7, 0 out of 10. Do not max it, that will not be needed. We just want the mods to be in Chaos 7, our ascension level will provide the damage. So in total, it will cost 1,146,825 gold. Just food for thought, upgrading your stuff is optional, but if you are stuck on the floor, you have the option to upgrade. Now, how do you get back to Chaos 7? It's actually super easy, barely an inconvenience. Once you do beat an onslaught floor past floor 27, use any floor loot that you can find and put it onto your side hero. This will give you the gear score to be able to play Chaos 7 again. How convenient. The game will also give you bonus gold for beating all of the Chaos Expeditions, even though you just did one floor. A very considerate feature. 
Now, what is the best tower to use for your reset journey? To be honest, any tower is good for reset. Whatever setup that you have that you're comfortable with, just go with it. As long as you have the build for it and get the max attack rate for the tower, it's going to do well. In this video, I do have a build setup example. Some defenses are in campaign, some defenses are upgraded to KL7, some are even random relics that I found on the floor. But the core shard that makes this setup work is Power Pylon. Power Pylon is a very underrated shard. It provides a lot of damage, but you have to have it on a blockade. It's a KL7 shard, so you can easily farm it and guild it. Now, this is on floor 80. That's the highest target floor that you'll ever do for your resets. And this setup does pretty well, and it's pretty funny to watch. Last thing to note, tinkering is very cheap because everything has been downgraded to campaign. It costs 25 defender medals. Consider the option to craft some builds when you reset. Hopefully you're now mentally prepared for your ancient power journey. All I can say is good luck and have fun. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this long video. If you did enjoy this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more DD2 content. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.